The air in the underworld was thick with malice and darkness, as if one could feel the very essence of chaos seeping to their bones. The solar bark of Ra glided silently through the inky blackness of this place, its golden hull cutting through the murky waters with the grace of a celestial swan. Atum Ra, his brilliant sun-like aura dimmed to a mere flicker, stood at its helm, his gaze fixed on the eternal horizon, the ultimate force in the universe. He knew that it was the only way through this perilous journey that he could be reborn anew, bringing light and life to the world above. Set, the nature of chaos, stood firmly at his side, his eyes glowing with determination. He knew the importance of the task at hand, to defend Atun Ra from the vile clutches of Apep. The bark itself was a sight to behold, its sleek ebony wood glinting with the golden accents in the dim, otherworldly light. Pictures depicting journeys and conquests were etched along its side. Neith couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and reverence at the ancient vessel. Set's eyes narrowed, his chaotic essence pulsing with a fierce hunger for battle. His gaze pierced through the darkness as he searched for the slightest hint of Apep's minions. The underworld seemed to breathe around him, the air thick and oppressive, but still he was unshaken. Hathor, called the Eye of Ra, looked resolute, her eyes burning like a thousand sun. Hathor's stature is tall and regal, her ebony skin radiating with inner strength. Her eyes glint with determination, like molten gold set with fierce diamonds. Long flowing black hair, the color of midnight, cascades down her back, giving off a divine aura. Neath, the skilled hunter, notched an arrow on her bow, her steady hands betraying no fear. And Mahis, the lion-hated Netcher, flexed his powerful muscles eager for battle. Let them come, Hathor spat, her disdain for Apep palpable. We will not allow darkness to consume the light, as if hearing her very words, the shrill cry of a demon answers, and in the distance the forms of the horde of the darkness appear. They move swiftly, urgently. Defend Ra, Hathor cried out, her warrior spirit burning brightly as she met the onslaught of dragons, vampires, and demons head on. Chunks of stone crumble beneath the weight of the conflict, scattering into the abyss. Strike now, Set yelled, charging into the fray head first. His chaotic energy surged around him, meeting Apep's own darkness with defiance. Neath loosed her arrows with deadly precision, each finding its mark in the hearts of their demonic foes. The sounds of her bowstring snapped through the air like thunder, her focus unwavering. And amid this chaos, Mahis tore through the enemy ranks, his lion's roar sending tremors through the underworld. His incredible strength toppled even the mightiest demons, their cries of agony a testament to his ferocity. Filthy creatures, we shall stand our ground, Neath bellowed, her bowstring singing as she unleashed arrow after arrow, each finding its mark with the throng of the enemies. As the demonic creatures swarmed around him, Mahis and Neath fought side by side, their weapons moving in perfect harmony as they defended the solar bark. Mahi's massive lion form was a fearsome sight, his claws tearing through flesh and bone with ease. Neath's bows were deadly accurate, each one imbued with her divine magic. But even as they fought with all their might, more and more of Apep's minions seemed to pour out from the shadows. It was as if there was an endless supply of them, but Neath couldn't help but feel a sense of dread creeping over her. We can't keep this up forever, she called out to Mahis, dunking under a swipe from a demon's claw. I know, he grunted, his voice strained from exertion. We need to find Apep and put an end to this. Neath nodded in agreement, her eyes darting around for any signs of the serpent demon. But amidst the confusion and chaos of the battle, it seemed nearly impossible to pinpoint her location. Neath's mouth was dry and parched, her tongue sticking to the roof of her mouth from the heat and tension of the battle. The metallic taste of fear and determination lingered in her tongue. We could use some help over here, Towerette yelled from across the deck. The hippopotamus Netter was locked in combat with several demons at once, her powerful body struggling against their relentless attack. Let's go, Neath said to Mahis, and together they rushed over to aid her. With their combined strength, they were able to quickly dispatch the remaining demons 
before turning their attention back to the task at hand. But just when it seemed they had gained some ground, Apet herself emerged from the darkness. Her massive serpentine body coiled around the solar bark like a suffocating embrace. It ends here, she hissed, in a voice that seemed to reverberate through the very fiber of their beings. You cannot stop me. Neith felt a surge of fear and anger mix up inside her as she stared up. Set look out, Mahis roared, leaping with lion-like agility to intercept a vampire that had lunged towards the nectar of chaos. His claws flashed in a fierce struggle, both warriors determined to overpower the other. The vampire was fast and agile, slipping through Mahi's grip and emerging behind him, only to fall to the arrows of Neath as one pierces his heart. Thank you, Mahis, Neath, sat grunted, his heart pounding within his chest. We cannot afford to lose this battle, he thought, his mind racing with tactics and strategies. Your pathetic defense is no match for my forces, Apep jeered, her voice dripping with venom. Soon, Atun Ra will be mine to destroy. Never, Hawther growled, her eyes blazing with divine fury. You underestimate the power of Ra's defenders. You underestimate the power of Ra's protectors. Overconfidence will be your downfall, Apep hissed, her cruel laugh echoing through the underworld. As Set parried and struck against the relentless tide of enemies, he couldn't help but feel a seed of doubt take root in him. Can we truly win this battle? The question nagged at the edges of his mind, threatening to distract him from the life or death struggle unfolding before him. Stand strong, my friends, he shouted, hoping to bolster their spirits as well as his own. We are the chosen defenders of Ra, and we shall not falter. Your words ring true, said Mahis called out in the midst of the fray, his lion head bared in a snarl. We shall drive back these fiends and ensure the safe passage of Atun Ra through the underworld. Then let us unite our powers and vanquish this darkness, Neith declared, her arrowheads glowing with divine energy, for Ra and for all creation. Together they fought with a newfound strength and determination, knowing that the fate of the world depended on their ability to hold back the encroaching chaos. The clash of steel against scales, the hiss of serpents, and the cries of battle filled the air as Set, Hathor, Neith, Mahis, and Bastet valiantly fought to defend Ra from, Ap from Apet's relentless forces. Keep them back, said Bellow, swinging his mighty kopesh, cleaving through thick dragon scale with a shower of sparks. His heart pounded like a war drum, threatening to drown out the sounds. Focus your attacks on their weak points, Neath shouted, her eyes scanning for targets. The Neomonic horror consisted of grotesque creatures, twisted and deformed in their appearance. Their skin was a sickly shade of green, their bodies covered in warts and oozing sores. Horns protruded from their heads and their eyes glowed with otherworldly light. Pulling back her bowstring, she released a flurry of arrows into the Diamonic Horde. Each found its mark, piercing chinks in the armor and felling numerous enemies. By my claws will shred these abominations, Mahis roared, lunging forward, his lion head snapping at the throat of particularly fearsome demons. Blood splattered across his fur but he felt no satisfaction, only grim determination. Your help is needed here, Bastet, Hathor called out, deflecting a vampire strike with a, with a swift swing of a solar disc. We must protect Ra at all costs. Understood, Bastet replies, her feline grace allowing her to weave between the chaotic melee, her dagger slashing through the ranks of her foes with deadly precision. If only we can stand our ground, said Thought, as he dispatched another enemy. But how long can we hold on? The battle raged on, and despite their combined might, the defenders of Ra began to feel the strain of their desperate struggle. With a sickening crunch, Mahis fell to the ground, overwhelmed by a group of demons. The world seems slow as he falls toward the ground, his lion form withering in pain. He had been caught off guard, his attention diverted by a fierce demon that had lunged at him from behind. Mahis Neath cried out, her voice sinking at the sight of her companion's defeat. She quickly dispatched her current opponent and raced towards him, arrows raining down on any men her arrows raining down on any enemies who dared come near. Mahi, she cried, as she reached him, her voice twisted with grief and rage. You will pay for this, you vile creatures. Neath, don't let your emotions cloud your judgment, said Warren. But his words were vain. Neath charged forward, her arrows flying like a vengeful storm, but she failed to notice a demon sneaking up behind her. With a swift, brutal strike, 
her life was snuffed out, leaving Set to scream her name in anguish. Focus, Set, Hathor urged, tears in her eyes as she fought on. We can mourn later, but right now we must continue our duty. Forgive me, Set muttered, swallowing the lump in his throat. I cannot let their sacrifices be in vain. He redoubled his effort, cutting down foes left and right, but it wasn't enough. In a moment of distraction, a demon's blade found its way through his defenses, impelling him. Set, Bastet cried out, witnessing the natural chaos fall, his blood staining the underworld soil. Go, protect Ra, Set gasped, his vision darkening as he felt the life slipping away from him. Your sacrifices won't be forgotten, Hathor vowed, her voice trembling with emotion. Bastet, stand with me. We will see this battle through the end. By my father's name we will, Bastet agreed, her daggers flashing in dim light as they continued the fight for raw survival. Bast's heart pounded in her chest, the stench of death and decay filled her nostrils as she fought alongside Hathor. The underworld's darkness seemed to swallow them whole, yet they pressed on, guided by their unwavering devotion to Ra and to life itself. Watch your back, Hathor yelled, her powerful voice slicing through the cacophony of battle. A demon lunged at Bastet, its claws outstretched, but she whirled away in time to pierce his throat with her dagger. Thanks, Bastet grunted, wiping sweat from her brawl. We cannot fall. We must not fall. Her mind raced, her thoughts a whirlwind of memories and determination. Enough of this, Hathor roared, her eyes blazing with divine fury. Apet, face us. The ground trembled beneath her feet, and Ampet, the monstrous chaos snake, slithered into view, her scales shimmering like coal, her fangs dripping venom so potent it burned the very air. You wish for death, foolish protector? She hissed, her voice cold and merciless. Your reign of terror ends today, monster, Bastet snarled, gripping her daggers tightly. Her pulse raced, adrenaline coursing through her veins. Your friends have fallen already, Apep taunted, flicking her forked tongue. What hope do you have? More than you can know, Hathor narrowed her eyes, her muscles tensing, ready for the final confrontation. She glanced at Bastet. On my signal. Understood. Now, Hathor shouted, charging forward, her golden light surrounding her like a shield. Bastet followed suit, her agility and speed a lethal combination. Pathetic, Apep spat lashing out with her massive tail, but Hathor anticipated this move, leaping into the air just in time to avoid the crushing blow. Your hubris will be your downfall, serpent, Hathor cried out as she descended upon a pep, her fists glowing brightly. She struck the snake's head with all her might, sending it reeling backwards. Bastet seized the opportunity, for Set, Neath, Mahis. With a primal scream, she lunged at Apet, her dagger slicing through the air. Flashes of divine fury illuminated the darkness of the underworld as Bastet, called the Cat of Ra, sprang into action. Her fur shimmered with an eerie light, her lithe form dancing gracefully through the cacophony of battle. Apep, the chaos, Apep, the chaos snake, slithered, Apep, the chaos snake, slithered and coiled through the shadows, her black scales almost indiscernible amid the chaos. Ra will not fall to your twisted machinations, foul serpent, Bastet hissed, her emerald eyes narrowing with determination as she leaped toward Apet, her claws extending like gleaming daggers. I am the daughter of Aset, and I stand in defense of my father. Apep's laughter echoed through the underworld, cruel and mocking. Your precious Atum is weak, little cat. Every night my legion grows stronger. It is only a matter of time before we consume the world in darkness. Never, Bastet snarled, lashing out with her claws. They sliced through the air, mere inches from Apet's sinister visage. And as they fought, the underworld crumbled around them, the very fabric of existence, straining through the weight of their titanic struggle. Bastet knew that much hinged on this battle, the fate of Ra, the balance of good and evil, order and creation. I must prevail, she thought fiercely, for my father, for my friends, for every life that hangs in the balance. Your arrogance will be your undoing, Apep, Bastet cried darting forth to strike again. We shall banish you and your ilk from this realm forevermore. Empty words from a frightened kitten, Apep sneered, lashing out with her powerful coils. You cannot hope to best me, whelp. You are nothing more than a plaything, a momentary distraction. 
Then I shall make the most of that moment, Bastet roared, her voice echoing with divine power. As she lunged at Apep once more, she could feel the very essence of creation surging through her veins, granting her strength to vanquish this ancient foe. With a final, desperate strike, she drove her claws deep into Apep's flesh, tearing through scales and sinew. The massive snake recoiled in pain and shock, her red blood gushing in sickening spurts. Your time has come to an end, Apep, Hathor declared, standing tall, her, her divine power radiating like the sun itself. Let your end come swiftly, Chaos Serpent, Bastet whispered, her heart pounding in her chest as she stared down at the wounded snake. Hathor raises her sword, and in one swift motion, she severed the Chaos Snake's head from its body. No, Apet shrieked, her monstrous form beginning to disintegrate into the darkness of the underworld. By our fallen comrades, we have triumphed, Bastet whispered, glancing at the remains of their enemies scattered on the battlefield. We did it. We protected Ra. Let us return to the Solar Bark, sister, Hathor said softly, her gaze heavy with sorrow for the loss of their friends. Yes, Bastet replied, her voice thick with emotion. Hand in hand, they made their way back to the vessel, knowing that the newborn day was saved and the world had been spared from Apet's destruction. As the two approached the solar bark, their eyes burned with the fury of battle and the weight of loss. The vessel, now glowing softly in the faint light of the underworld, seemed to beckon them home. Is it truly over? Bastet asked quietly, her voice echoing in the vast caverns around them. Only for today, Hathor replied, her, her voice steady in the horizon. Tomorrow we face Apet's legions again. Then we must make the most of this victory, Bastet declared, determination flaring within her. She tightened her grip on Hathor's hands, drawing strength from their unbreakable bond. Indeed, Hathor nodded, her golden eyes shimmering with purpose. We shall honor our fallen comrades and ensure their sacrifices were not in vain. They boarded the solar bark, feeling the warmth of Ross's presence envelop them like a comforting embrace. As the vessel began its journey towards the light, Bastet allowed herself a moment of reflection, pondering the events that had transpired. Set, Neath, Mahis. Your bravery will never be forgotten. Hey, Hathor whispered, breaking into her train of thoughts. You did well today. They would all be very proud. Thank you, sister, Bastet murmured, her words barely audible over the hum of the shoulder bark's engines. I only wish we could have saved them too. Sometimes, no matter how hard we fight, we can't escape the darkness fully, Hathor said softly, her gaze locked into the distant glow of the living world. But through our actions, we can bring light back to the world. True, Bastet mused, watching the shadows retreat before the solar bark's light. And with each new day, we are given the chance to make things right. Indeed, Hathor smiled. Now come, let us prepare for our return to the realm of the living. Our duty is far from over. Her determination renewed by Hathor's words. Together, they set about their task readying to face whatever challenges awaited them in the world above.